You want to see how desperate Fox is as Vice President Kamala Harris continues to surge ahead of Donald Trump? This was their big story last night, I kid you not. They're saying on Fox that Vice President Kamala Harris said, and I'm like, and then she said that her husband likes pretzels and that that was a big scandal on Fox. Here, this is Laura Ingraham talking about it. Play the clip. And just like Biden had his ice cream runs, Kamala has her snack food fun. I would love to give you a bag of pretzels to take back. Give me a bag of pretzels okay, to okay, give Doug. Okay, because okay, he great, actually okay, would be really okay. upset if I did not bring him a bag. So, because I can tell you that he like secretly eats pretzels at night. Does and he he's really? Like, and I'm like, okay. honey, you gotta slow down well, on the pretzels. Just, did she say, and I'm like, duh. All right, who believes her husband secretly eats pretzels? Is that what she said? It sounds fake to me, but really. Yeah, and they kept on going. Then you had Jesse Waters spend a ton of time talking about how uh, Vice President Kamala Harris's husband, Doug Emhoff, um, is called Dougie McDouble. I, I don't even understand what, I understand what they're talking about. Here, play this clip. Unlike Kamala, Dougie McDouble can actually explain his rise at the Golden Arches. He's got stories. Dougie started off on trash duty and cleaning the grill, then made it to the fry station and eventually got called up to the big leagues, mastering the Big Mac. Dougie was a savant with those sesame seed buns, and his hard work got him employee of the month. Doug's fast food success story rivals Ronald McDonald's, and he's backing it up with receipts. Why can't Kamala do the same? Are we going to learn next week that Walls worked at McDonald's too? Then Jesse Waters had on the network a billionaire, uh, Woody Johnson, and asked Woody Johnson if Trump is a man of the people. It's like the worst propaganda, too. It's not even good propaganda. Play the clip. All right, Woody Johnson, you spent some time with Donald Trump the other day at that business roundtable here in Manhattan. Was he for the people? Oh, 100%, Jesse. And then Jesse Waters says the only thing that could possibly get under Donald Trump's skin as if you say he's a bad golfer or if he's bankrupt. Play this clip. We've covered Trump for almost 10 years. The only thing that's gonna put him on the defensive is if you say he went bankrupt or he's a bad golfer. You can say anything else about the guy, and they have, and he just shakes it off. Yeah, I don't know, Jesse. Calling him weird seems to be working pretty good, as we saw on Hannity, also on Fox. Play this clip. JD is not weird, he's a solid rock. I happen to be a very solid rock. We're not weird. We're other things, perhaps, but we're not weird. <laughs> but he is a weird guy. He walks on the stage. There's something wrong with that guy. And he called me weird. And then the fake news media picks it up. That was the word of the day. Weird, weird, weird. They're all going, but we're not weird guys. Also, the big story on Fox yesterday is they're saying there's no such thing as Taylor mania anymore. Right? This is... I guess what the Fox viewers want to hear, there's there's no such thing as Taylor mania because they're terrified that what Taylor Swift's going to endorse Vice President Kamala Harris. So they think they have the power just to say that, play this clip. There is no more Taylor mania. It doesn't exist. Are, Are you is? kidding? Have you been to <laughs> yeah. one of our concerts? I'm talking Are about within the mind? NFL. There's no Taylor mania in the NFL. Oh my gosh. There obviously they, is because we're talking you know about how it, many right? Because women, of our stupid producers. Right, you know like how it. many women watch football now because of Taylor Swift? I don't even... Buy they that. Don't watch it. I'm just watching it because it's on when yeah. the guys watch oh, it. Really? I just yeah, kidding. I don't they might be so. fans. I think that that and they kept on going on with that topic with Jesse Waters saying, "It's funny how women think that they could make men change their look if they want to." Here, play this clip. It's funny how women make men change their look if the woman is like famous and the man's not. Mm -hmm. But give me another example. Are you about to say that Travis Kelsey <clears throat> isn't famous? Well, he wasn't famous until Taylor Swift started dating, That's right? That's not <laughs> I got tricked into that. You know that okay. game? When the All girls right. are like, did you know, I mean, this guy is like, no one even knew yeah. who he was. I didn't know. I did. I didn't even yeah, know you, because is. you're not really a guy. <laughs> oh, there are some deep-seated issues there that Jesse Waters <laughs> has. Oh, man. A pro-democracy advocate on Fox, Jessica Tarlov, though. She's just sticking with facts and data. Here's what she had to say. Play the clip. Kamala Harris is running a campaign that is resonating with the American public. That's just a fact about it. She has moved so far ahead of where Joe Biden was, you know, up seven, eight points in some of these states. She just pulled in $361 million in fundraising in August. That's triple what Trump brought in. And the most exciting part of that is that 1.3 million of those donors are new donors, people who haven't given in this cycle at all. 
And the stories that people are trying to pin on her, like the Washington Post did this deep dive into the turnover within her office, also citing the fact, by the way, that Mike Pence had 83% turnover in his office if you're using the same standards. But these quotes are ludicrous. Like someone who worked for her said, it's stressful to brief her because she read all the materials and annotated it and prepared to talk through it. God forbid the woman actually read the briefing book. And this all flies in the face of what people had said about her, that she was unprepared, that she was pissed at people for not prepping her. It was all about how she took this so seriously that she took it like a prosecutor would and was like, I'm not just going to do this because you told me to. I'm going to ask you why. And I have not met yet a real live Democrat who says, you know what I'm really mad about? That I don't see Kamala Harris all the time in big interviews. They're watching her at rallies. They're listening to what she had to say. They're high off the DNC 100%, and they're giving their money. Jesse. You know, and as Fox is right now focusing on what they believe is a massive scandal involving Vice President Kamala Harris by her saying, and I'm like, and something about eating pretzels, I just want to remind you of when former President Barack Obama wore the tan suit, and that was like the biggest story every day we heard about that. On the other hand, Donald Trump's an adjudicated sexual assaulter. A jury found him guilty on 34 felony counts. He's on audio tape bragging about sexually assaulting women and sexually harassing women. He said that sexually harassing women is the most courageous thing he did when he called it locker room talk. Um, but anyway, th th this is what Fox and media, the corporate media was really focused on with uh, former President Barack Obama. Play this clip. The president's tan suit is now a Republican target. Hey, did you hear? President Obama was wearing <gasps> a tan suit at a press conference. That's a major media issue, don't you think? Take a look. There's the president. Can you guess what has people talking? It's that suit. Tantastic. The audacity of taupe. Yes, we can. This suit is not presidential. What do you think about the brown suit? The beige suit? The tan suit? Was it beige? Was it taupe? Was it cream? Was it khaki? Or all of the above? Stone? It may be. One of the ugliest suits in the history of America. I think it was shocking to a lot of people. Look at that. That horrible light tan suit. An impeachable offense right there. I looked twice to make sure he wasn't a circus ringmaster. The only thing missing was the top hat. Whoever talked him into going into a tan suit, they're so desperate because of these low poll numbers, they're willing to do anything. A serious businessman wears dark blue or black to important meetings. I think it's a sign to enemies that he's a wimp. This confirms he's a Marxist. You're going to a garden wedding, the tan suit's fine. Otherwise, forget it. That's the other thing is, is they say it didn't fit. Some people saying it was too casual, not presidential, and the wrong color for the world's leader. There's no way I think any of us can excuse what the president did yesterday. For him to walk out, I'm not trying to be trivial here, but in a light suit. He looked like he was on his way to a party at the Hamptons. It did not show the seriousness of purpose that you need from a commander in chief. This is not presidential dress. I think he was wearing a jogging suit. It's just a taupe suit. you got to be kidding me. I take nothing away from Americans' right to tweet anything they want, but it's a suit, for God's sake. <laughs> Only liberals could actually elect a guy with a tan suit. Perhaps President Obama was channeling one of his predecessors. President Reagan wore a light tan suit. It's not like he's out there wearing a purple suit or a pink suit. It's a tan suit. Why are we so concerned about the color of a suit? The president stands squarely behind the decision that he made yesterday to wear his summer suit at yesterday's news conference. It's the Thursday before Labor Day. He feels pretty good about it. Because I could share with you other stories that they should have covered on Friday, which Fox won't cover. Like, how about when Donald Trump gave an unhinged press conference and didn't know that he was not the president in 2023? Think about that. Imagine if President Biden didn't know that he was the president at a certain period of time. But so Donald Trump didn't know that he was not president. And then he went on to further defame his sexual assault victim, E. Jean Carroll, on TV. Here, play this clip. I wanted to show up to the trial, to the first trial. My lawyer, who's not up here, not with us any longer. Sir, you should not show up. You're the former president or the president. I don't even know when, when the trial was, but you're the president of the United States, sir. This is beneath you. I've got this 100%. The dress is negative, but he wasn't able to use it. Sir, it's beneath you to show up. I said, but wouldn't that be bad for a jury? Wouldn't that be sort of bad for a jury if I don't show up? He said, sir, you don't have to show up. I've got this. 
You shouldn't do it. It's beneath you. It's beneath the office of the president. I understood what he meant by that. And so I didn't show up. And I was found guilty. Of and then going back to um, Woody Johnson, the billionaire, saying that Donald Trump is a man of the people. Uh, I'll at, watch the Donald Trump's response when he's asked a very simple question. What are you going to do to make child care affordable? Trump can't answer it here. Play this clip. If you win in November, can you commit to prioritizing legislation to make child care affordable? And if so, what specific piece of legislation will you advance? Well, I would do that. And we're sitting down. You know, I was uh, somebody. We had uh, Senator Marco Rubio and my daughter Ivanka was so uh, impactful on that issue. It's a very important issue. But I think when you talk about the kind of numbers that I'm talking about, that because look, child care is child care. It's couldn't, you know, there's something you have to have it in this country. You have to have it. Uh, but when you talk about those numbers compared to the kind of numbers that I'm talking about by taxing foreign nations at levels that they're not used to, but they'll get used to it very quickly. And it's not going to stop them from doing business with us, but they'll have a very substantial tax when they send product into our country. Uh, those numbers are so much bigger than any numbers that we're talking about, including child care that it's going to take care. We're going to have, I, I look forward to having no deficits within a fairly short period of time, coupled with uh, the reductions that I told you about on waste and fraud and all of the other things that are going on in our country, because I have to stay with child care. I want to stay with child care, but those numbers are small relative to the kind of economic numbers that I'm talking about, including growth, but growth also headed up by what the plan is that I just, uh, that I just told you about. We're going to be taking in trillions of dollars, and as much as child care uh, is talked about as being expensive, it's, relatively speaking, not very expensive compared to the kind of numbers we'll be taking in. We're going to make this into an incredible country that can afford to take care of its people, and then we'll worry about the rest of the world. Let's help other people. But we're going to take care of our country first. This is about America first. It's about make america great again we have to do it because right now we're a failing nation so we'll take care of it thank you very good question thank you anyway let me know what you think hit subscribe let's get to three million subscribers together thanks for watching love this video make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things midas by signing up to the midas touch newsletter at midastouch.com newsletter